Good evening. I'm Rachel Heiser, and I was born and raised in Cleveland. For as long as I can remember, my family has been involved in Jewish Cleveland. See, my mother was a Jewish educator, and I would tag along with her to Bureau of Jewish Education meetings and conferences, now the JECC. When she became the education director at Congregation Beth Am, I attended and then taught at her school. In our family, it's always been about knowing your past, being involved in the community, and building for our future. The Jewish Federation of Cleveland has helped me to do this. When I was about five years old, my brother started playing soccer with a, <laughs> this is me and Michelle, his sister, with a young boy named Igor Ingerman from the former Soviet Union. This family of four from Odessa came to Cleveland with the assistance of Len Gold and the Jewish Federation of Cleveland. The Ingermans, who knew nothing of being Jewish other than discrimination, joined us for a Jewish holiday and quickly became part of our family. We taught them about Judaism, and they taught us what it was like to live in the former Soviet Union before 1980. During law school, I had the opportunity to travel to St. Petersburg, Russia for the Passover project through the Jewish Federation of Cleveland. During this mission, I was able to see how our friends had lived before they moved to America. But I also heard how things were changing, especially for the Jews. The Ingerman story of not being admitted to medical school and other activities due to Jewish quotas and anti-Semitism was changing. College students were learning what it meant to be a Jew. Klezmer festivals were happening. And we celebrated Passover with the Jewish community at the Esod, the Jewish Community Center. The situation is improving, but as Ben mentioned tonight, there's still some who are struggling. I was reminded of this when we delivered a monthly food package provided by the JDC, funded by dollars raised right here in Cleveland. The recipient named Joseph was lonely because he could not navigate the stairs outside his fourth floor apartment. He appreciated the Passover food, but even more so, I think he appreciated the company that we brought. We learned so much from him, because for over an hour, he told us what it was like to live in the former Soviet Union, but at the time, the Soviet Union, in the 1930s and 40s. During that visit, a Federation statistic became a personal experience. Just like the Ingermans became part of our family, Joseph and all of the Jews we met with, celebrated with, and talked with in St. Petersburg became my family. Not everyone can travel to Russia to see our campaign dollars in action, so I feel honored to have had this opportunity and to share these stories with you. In fact, I could share stories all night about my travels to St. Petersburg, to Israel, Havata Shomer, and all the connections that Federation has allowed me to make throughout our Jewish community. But others can, have, and will tonight. What I want to share with you tonight is a story that less than a handful of us from Cleveland can share. This past February, through the National Young Leadership Cabinet, Michelle Hirsch, Eliana Levine, Alyssa Wolliger, and I traveled with about 100 young Jewish leaders to India. You may be wondering, why India? Why would JFNA go on a mission to India? Are there any Jews there? Well, while most have made Aliyah, there are still about 5,000 Jews left in India. And they are all our family. During the first part of the trip, we learned about the Jewish history there. We visited a beach where Jews landed after being exiled from other lands. We visited a Jewish cemetery and a small synagogue in the town of Alibag, a town which is named after a philanthropic Jewish merchant. After the historical sites, we learned about the engagement projects happening at the Jewish Community Center. The Jewish Federation of Cleveland, through its work with the JDC and Jewish Agency, provides social and educational services for the small community of Jews in India and for others living in poverty, regardless of their religious or ethnic background. The JCC in Mumbai did not have a running track, a row machine, nor most of the things that we've come to expect at the Mandel JCC. This is a place where Jews came to gather and learn from all ages and all spectrums, whether they were learning the Aleph Bet, cooking, Israeli dancing, blessings, or Jewish history. 
This is also where JDC interns from America, Israel, and other countries would come to connect with the community, like our Shin Shanim and Shlichot. On Friday, chalot braided and baked by a non-Jewish special needs group are sold at the JCC to be placed on Shabbat tables in Mumbai. Think about that. This is very similar to the challah that I have bought, and many of you, at the Mandel JCC from participants in the JFSA Horvitz Youth Ability Program. I have to tell you, the challah braiding skills of these young adults at the Ohm Creation Center were amazing and very fast, and Michelle and I tried to keep up, but they kind of kicked us out of the kitchen when we could not. <laughs> at the JCC, we also learned about the social programs that Jews have created to help the poverty stricken in India. One in five people in Mumbai fall below the poverty level. This is one of the highest rates in the world. In Mumbai, we saw a young girl on the street performing circus acts, begging for money and food. Her brother was not fully clothed, her mother was crying, and none of them were wearing shoes. This is the scene that in 2011, a man named Jacob saw in addition, he saw children digging through trash for the, to find their food for the day, with no prospect of changing their future nor the future of their children. He decided he had to do something. With the funding from the JDC, Jacob created Gabriel Project Mumbai and opened schools. These schools don't just teach children to read and write. They were feeding children. This is a very important element of convincing their parents to send them to school. They were also teaching the children about hygiene and nutrition. Gabriel Project Mumbai then opened a central kitchen where some of the, of the mothers could cook the meals for the schools and earn money to actually buy food for their families. This ripple effect is amazing. Our projects have been, other projects have been rolled out and led by Jews in India as well. Women from slums are collecting used paper from hotels to recycle and make stationery to sell to printing companies. Soap is being collected from hotels to sanitize, melt, reshape, and distribute to children in the slums for hygiene education and use. Health clinics are opening in the slums to provide basic checkups and health care. These projects aren't just helping Jews, these projects are helping the entire community. Thanks to your support, the Jewish community in Mumbai is lifting up the community around them. This is a clear display of tikkun olam. A couple of days after our visit to the JCC, we shared Shabbat with young Jews from Mumbai and Delhi. During our walks from the hotel to the synagogue, I spoke with a young man named Eli Ramjikar. Coincidentally, the one place he's ever been to in America was Cleveland. <laughs> Eli is working to connect and engage other young Jews in India. He and his friends shared their Shabbat customs with us. After Eliana Levine recited the Torah blessing, Eli read beautifully from the Torah. We closed out Shabbat with a beautiful and unique Indian Havdalah ceremony. Eli and I continue to exchange Shabbat greetings on WhatsApp. We live so far away, but we have so much in common. Through the Jewish Federation, I was able to experience all of this. I was able to learn about the past, experience the present, and have a sneak peek at the future. It's somewhat easy to see the programs that the annual campaign funds here, like feeding and housing families in need, keeping day school tuitions affordable and accessible to all Jewish families, providing security and coordinating training with our day schools to keep our children safe, and connecting Jews at the JCC and summer soiree. But your contribution to the annual campaign is also doing this in India, Russia, and Israel, and 68 other communities where you find Jews around the world. I appreciate and enjoy my Jewish connections. I want my children to have that connection, and I want it to be strong. That's one of the many reasons why my husband and I send our children to school at Mandel JDS, one of the Jewish day schools supported by the Campaign for Jewish Needs. I want them to be able to feel connected to the local Jewish community and every Jewish community. When you look at the big picture, it makes sense. When we give to Federation, our community grows. The Jewish people grow. Living in Cleveland, I see what our dollars are doing in our Jewish community here. 
When I visit other Jewish communities, I connect with the people, but I get to see also what our dollars are doing there. These places are very different from Cleveland, but in some ways, not so much. There are aspects that bring us together. They're our family, whether they're in Israel, Russia, or India. Thank you to the Jewish Federation for helping us connect with and support our family. And thank you to all of you for investing in that work to support our Jewish community around the globe. Spasiba Bashoya, Tadaraba, Danyavad. Thank you for inspiring me.